Hello, I'm Glenn Cummings. I'm the president of the University of Southern Maine, and welcome to our December version of USM Updates. We have a wonderful show for you today. Later, we will be talking to Dr. Richard Bilodeau for our business department. He will be bringing in two of his students to talk about why it's important to have innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship in an ever-changing business world here in Maine and throughout the world. In addition, we will be showing or listening to some music from the uh, very talented USM Choir. Uh, they will be, uh, we will be sh listening to some music from a rendition on November 28th called Joyous Sounds for a Festive Season. But right now in the studio, we actually have the ESP group, which <laughs> may not be what you think it is. It is Environmental Science and Policy. We have Dr. Karen Wilson here, and she has two of her students, uh, Maria Guerra, Guerra yeah. and, uh, and she's a senior from Falmouth, and she'll be graduating this year and already has some plans for what she'd like to do next. And with her is Sam Maddie, yes. And Sam <laughs> is 17 years old, already in your yeah. second year here with us, right? Is it, or yeah, I'll be a junior by the end of the semester. Perfect. And you are studying also ESP as well, right? I am, yes. They're going to talk to us a little bit about what their aquaponics project and work that they've been doing. I'll start with you, uh, Karen. Uh, tell us a little bit about what what is aquaponics for those of us who may not be exactly in the know. Great. So aquaponics is a system where you're attaching a fish tank to a grow bed for plants. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that the fish waste is funneled up through the water into the grow bed and then the plants clean Talk about a virtuous water. cycle, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. and it goes right back down no to chemicals? the fish tank. This is clean? There's no chemicals. No, it's wow. essentially an organic wow. uh, process. What kind of fish? T We're tilapia? using tilapia, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So they are uh, from the Middle East originally. Yeah. Um, very common fish used for something like this. And except ours aren't going like to be eaten. Bales <laughs> and bales of Swiss chard and cilantro. Is that that's right? right. So it? this first semester was the first time we've grown anything, yeah. uh, and we grew um, about five to to nine pounds wow. of cilantro wow. Wow. and Swiss chard. And Maria, tell us a little bit about your role in the, the, the Swiss chard and cilantro production through aquaponics. <laughs> yeah, well, actually Sam and I were working on a similar project within the whole system. We were uh, trying to manipulate fish stocking densities within the tanks. So we were trying to see if different numbers of fish would produce different amounts of uh, plant production. Right. Uh, overall, we were just trying to keep the fish alive. Wow, <laughs> it wow. became more of How'd like... How'd you do on that, by the way? I mean, B I think minimal casualties. Yeah, right, right. right. Um, but, now, now, yeah. The, uh, tilapia have a reputation for jumping out of your, your, uh, your pool. Do they do that in your barrel? Because I remember uh, we had an aquaponics where I uh, used to work, and, and yeah. uh, sometimes you'd put your hand in, and they would jump out of the, the pool. They're, they're very mobile, but we, uh, we had <laughs> a, a cover on top just to keep uh, uh, evaporation from yeah. reducing too much water yeah. in the tank. But yeah, it was very much a trial and error um, maintenance. We were trying to just establish something rather than and test. And you have two major tanks, is that right? Two 250-gallon tanks? We have two large tanks large tank. and then two smaller, yeah. what were they, 150? 170 uh, liters, about 45 gallons. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, two smaller tanks to maintain. Now, do you write, do you require them to write research projects? Okay. Right, so it, the, the, the class that uh, both students were part of this semester was our research methods course. Okay. And so, we, uh, we split into three groups and everyone wrote a proposal yeah. on what they would be working on during the semester. Okay. Um, so they actually went through the entire sort of research process of doing a literature review, oh. doing observations oh. on the systems to figure out what they wanted to do. So, so Sam, uh, do you, do, what was your project? I mean, would, do you have a particular scientific question, a research question that you did and then you used the aquaponic uh, to, uh, uh, tanks to try to help you answer that? So uh, yeah, I was. We, we didn't have a different project for each student. We worked in teams because there was a lot of work to do and a lot of data to collect. Yeah. I was on the same team with Maria, uh -huh. where we started with an attempt at um, uh, determining the which of two fish densities would be best for fish and plant production. Got it, got but it. since we were the fish team, most of our work was, as she said, focused on establishing the system, yeah. keeping the fish alive, making sure the pH and temperature were within acceptable ranges, 
but we still got to go. So even though results won't that's that uh, statistically significant, they they didn't uh, we didn't have enough application. We um, had too many confounding variables. We got to go through the whole research project, which was wow. extremely valuable yeah. educationally. Wow. And we got to, when we established an aquaponics lab, which hopefully will be up and running for many semesters to come. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for doing that, by the way, the aquaponics that yeah. other people can use. Right. And the fact oh, yeah. that you can do research, I mean, exactly what USM wants right. to be, right? We want the excellence in the classroom, the traditional classroom, matched by authentic experiences. It sounds That's like right. you've got a good chance to do that. And before I forget, we're supposed to say thank you to Poland Spring, right. I believe. Thank you, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Right. And uh, to it was an EPSCOR grant too, which is yeah, some federal right. money that came through. So, Karen, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about some of the, some of the stuff that you do more generally in ESP and in sure, uh, environmental sure. and science. Well, planning. environmental science and, and planning. Our goal is to have these sort of hands-on opportunities. Um, that is really what we're trying to do. We're trying to give students an opportunity to get the education they need. That mm -hmm. so as soon as they graduate. They can go out into the workforce if they want, yeah. or they can head out into grad school Business, or whatever they might want to do. Businesses tell us so much that what they really want from students is that, have you, do you have any idea what our business is about? Right. And they don't have to be technically skilled in every aspect of the That's business, right. but they don't like, okay, does Maria know in general what it means to be a water plant manager, and, mm -hmm. uh, or at least to work at a water plant, so that's right. very helpful. Right. Tell us about, for you, I'll ask both of you, what did you? What attracted you to environmental science and planning? Is there something? Uh, was it was it a, a vision about the world, or is it just something that you happen to be good at science and, and you just wanted to do it? I'll start with you, Maria. Um, well, I was I, I was originally a chemistry major, with the ultimate goal of uh, using it as a tool for environmental science. Mm -hmm. um, then I transferred to USM, went directly into the environmental science program. Uh, I guess I have a very idealistic <laughs> of the concept. I enjoy learning about the, uh, the connectivity mm. of everything and just the big systems mm. and how it incorporates itty bitty systems. At the end, at the and end I just they were all one big uh, yeah, ecosystem. Yeah, and I think it's just a great. Uh, concept that can be applied to everything but and taking care of our home is, yeah. you know, numero uno. Yeah, in my yeah and, and <laughs> we have a lot of uh, challenges in taking care of that home, so yeah. thank you for stepping up. Maddie, what, what uh, I mean, um, uh, you, excuse me, I, not uh, Maddie, it was... Uh, Actually, uh, it is Maddie. It is Maddie, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mr. Maddie, Sam, <laughs> uh, Tell us a little bit about why you were involved in, in ESP. What has what it attracted you to environmental science and policy? Well, that's an interesting question, Mr. President. I have been... Uh, interested in environmental issues and active in environmental issues from a very young age. I've been interested in it for, for a very long time. I uh, organized a um, trash walk in my after school program when I was seven okay. and uh, I, awesome. I, yeah, I spent a lot of time over the next couple of years uh, trying to disseminate environmental news. Uh, I actually spent a lot of time working on a personal project to get petition signatures to stop the Portland Montreal pipeline currently yeah, yeah, bogged yeah, down yeah. in legal yeah. disputes. And uh, so when it came time for, to go to college, there was really no other choice of a major. It's what I've always been interested in and always wow. want to do. Wow. I, I've been homeschooled most of my life, so I've been allowed to uh, explore my, m more, more how the things I'm interested in as well as the main curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I think that flexibility is what has allowed me to uh, start college at 15 mm -hmm. and now at 17 be uh, sophomore heading into junior at USM. Wow. And after I, like uh, after I graduate here, I'd like to join the Peace Corps and long term, I'd like to work in developing countries to help them conserve their biosphere while increasing their standard of living. That's fantastic. Well, and you also reflect that early college program that we're very proud of here right. at USM, getting students into college early. So. That's been immensely helpful. Yeah. Really, yeah. I can't give you at USM enough props for that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's it's the only college I can walk to for my home. Right, it, right. It's the only way that I could be in college at this age, but that's also the work that I can do and kind of intellectually need to do. So that's been incredibly helpful. Sam, you'll be that, coming right? with a lot of speeches uh, to, for me, and you can put you on some marketing ads. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, thank you, all, all three yeah, of you. I really right. appreciate it. Thank you to both uh, our students here and to Dr. Wilson for uh, stepping in, especially at the end of the semester, oh, and stepping up uh, to, to give us a little glimpse of the many good things that ESP okay. does and quite frankly just seriously has a great reputation as a program so okay. all those people looking for majors you guys might be a, a good one to look at and when we come back we will have Dr. Richard Bilodeau from the School of Business and he will be talking to us about innovation creativity and entrepreneurship in a changing world we look forward to seeing you in just a minute <music>
Well, my group is measuring the nutrient composition of the plants, so we're seeing if there's a difference between the plants up here, their nutrient composition, versus the plants all the way down at the end. Um, basically, we're learning about how the aquaponic system works and um, about nutrient recycling in a system. So the project is an aquaponic setup. Each setup includes a fish tank and then a grow bed, and then some kind of filtering for two of the tanks and other tanks, the water goes directly from the fish tank into the grow bed. And the idea is to sort of uh, put together aquaculture with hydroponics, and what's great about this is that it uses the fish waste to fuel the plant growth. And then the plants clean the water so that when it comes back down to the fish, it's relatively clean of mostly uh, nitrogenous waste, so nitrogen uh, species. For me, this is learning all about sustainability and a um, responsible way to grow produce. This is a great way for places that don't have great soil composition, don't have a lot of water resources. Um, this is a really good way because it recycles the water and you can use stuff like this that's uh, not actual soil, so it's a, uh, it's a synthetic substrate. And what's great about this project has all these applications to real life in many different ways. So for example, we have students who are studying water quality, basic water quality. We have students, for instance, who've recently gotten jobs in aquaculture. So anything that they learn here would be immediately applicable to aquaculture or to actually uh, aquaponics. So we have a couple of um, companies in Maine. And so if they were to hire a student who's gone through one of our courses that uses our aquaponics setup, then you know there's sort of light years ahead of having to be taught everything new. Well, environmental policy, you get a lot of hands-on work, you can do an internship, and um, the professors are very encouraging all the time. Hello and welcome back to the December update, USM update. We have with us uh, Professor Richard Bilodeau from the School of Business here at the University of Southern Maine. He's got a couple students with him. Delighted to have you with us. Uh, Professor Bilodeau, you have two students with you. They both have had you in class. I'm not going to ask them to tell me what they think of you yet. Um, we'll, we'll just start with, to your right is uh, Amy Abbott. She is a senior. She uh, has a double major in entrepreneurship and sustainable food systems or sustainable uh, sustainability. Is that what yep. it is? Great. And you are from Otisfield, Maine. Is that I right? I am, yes. That's right. And with her is Adam Clark. Adam uh, is a junior this year. You are a double major as well as a business administration and marketing, is that right? Yes. Uh, very good. And where are you from? Uh, I'm originally? from Yarmouth. Yarmouth, right in the neighborhood. So, Well, let's go back to Professor Bilodeau. He's okay, right? Do you like him? <laughs> no. oh, I picked my good. best too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Professor Bilodeau, you, are, you have pushed forward a minor, which is getting a lot of attention. Students are loving it, by the way. I hear a lot of great things about you. And um, it's something called ICE. Yes. What is ICE? That doesn't sound quite right for a serious well, business school. <laughs> you know, it's appropriate because the winter session is coming up. <laughs> right, right. But uh, it stands for Innovation, Creativity, and Entrepreneurship. And the minor is really designed to allow students to get a taste for entrepreneurship, what it would be like to either start a business or to help grow an existing business, right. figure out what a market opportunity is and how they could explore that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But in addition, we're starting to realize more and more that creativity and innovation are important. Mm -hmm. Creativity, and we use Very the frame, important. it's thinking new things, innovation's yeah. doing new things, right. and really creativity fuels innovation. And you know, often students will find in the minor, they'll take a class, Amy's taken the class with me, uh, called Creative Strategies for Entrepreneurs, where we'll meditate and color and draw and listen so, to so music. Uh, let me let's start you right there. So, so that, by the way, you know, people will say, how can you teach innovation and creativity? You're either born being creative or you're not creative. Obviously, you don't believe that. But I don't do believe that at all. Tell us a little bit about how do you get an, an Amy and, and Adam who are smart, but how do you sure. get them to be creative and innovative? So part of it is just recognizing that our creativity is the function of neurochemistry that we mm -hmm. have. So there are neurotransmitters called dopamine and serotonin, mm -hmm. and if we can optimize them and mm -hmm. we can get back to using the right hemisphere of our mm -hmm brain, mm -hmm. the hemisphere that we use more when we were children, mm -hmm. then often we can reactivate these creative right. centers. Right. And you know, one of the things that's fascinating to me, if we look at the research in the field, you know, surgeons that do their best surgery, mm -hmm. pilots that do their best flying, mm -hmm. professors that do their best teaching, mm -hmm. business leaders who make their best decisions, often what we find is those people are naturally doing things to boost their creativity. Wow. So. so let me jump on to, to, to Amy and Adam on this. 
Amy, talk to us about kind of examples where you've kind of been able to ignite that uh, neuroplasticity and start to think about uh, things in different ways where you might not normally have thought about it. Um, well, a lot of the techniques that we were taught are pretty simple, mm -hmm. and it only takes a few minutes, mm -hmm. a few minutes a day. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm normally an anxious person, uh -huh. so that's not good for creativity. <laughs> and a lot of these methods, um, I'm able just a couple minutes when yeah. I notice that, you know, if I'm getting yeah. anxious, yeah. then... Give me a couple ideas of what, what, when you say some of these things you do, what, what, what uh, decreases your anxiety and increases your, your new synergies? Um, so definitely breathing techniques, okay. I think, help a lot because you don't need anything to uh, do it. Yeah. And before presentations or exams or um, projects where I need to kind yeah. of think outside the box, um, some breathing techniques really help. You know, it's interesting too, your brain will work on a problem when you don't know it's working on a problem. Like I always had this thing in college where I would try to, if I had a, I was a history major and sometimes I had to you know, memorize dates and activities and whatever and you know, big lists of them. I would always do it the night before and my brain seemingly over that evening, the next time I'd wake up in the morning and I could remember so much of it. You know, so your brain does work for you if you give it a chance. Okay. Adam, what about you? Tell us a little bit about how you ignite uh, innovation creativity inside uh, inside your uh, your neurons well I think the group Enactus uh, I'm part of the Enactus group yeah. rather than the class that Amy's in okay um, so a lot of the things that we do creatively are brainstorming techniques to think of new ideas yeah. to yeah. help um, innovate um, things that we can do to help yeah. the community environment yeah. Um, yeah and also make a profit at the same time right um, right following the triple bottom line so. right Right, you know, and, and what you find with those kind of, you know, with brainstorming, if you're in a safe environment where people are building on their ideas together, you know, in a way that's not putting people down so you don't create the anxiety, some of the greatest ideas will start to happen. I found this in committee meetings where like, I've got an idea and I go into that committee and I'm like, this is the way we're gonna do it. And then people say, well, what if you do that? What if you do that? And I go, oh, this is 10 times better. <laughs> you know, if you can let go of your own kind of adhesion to your own thinking. The other word I wanna talk about a little bit, uh, Professor Bilodo, is entrepreneurship. So we have this mm -hmm. view of an entrepreneur. Amy goes out, she has a great business idea, she generates the business idea and she makes billions and she's a great entrepreneur. But the truth is, even if you're working in a, uh, in a carol somewhere in the, in the middle of Indianapolis in an insurance company, you can still be entrepreneurial. What, uh, tell us Abs a little bit about that. Absolutely true. So we're finding more and more that large corporations are looking for entrepreneurs to come and become the agents of change and innovation within those organizations. Mm. I have spent some time as part of my research mm. looking at what are the types of skills employers are looking for. And I've mm. talked to big companies like Deloitte Consulting right. and Delta Airlines and Coca-Cola. Mm. And surprisingly, creative and analytical thinking come up wow. often, mm. and the skills of entrepreneurs come up often. And one of the things that a lot of corporations report, you know, you can train people how to be better marketers, mm -hmm. but it's often difficult to train people how to be better thinkers. Right, and right. so some of what we're doing in entrepreneurship is just really harnessing all of the skills and abilities that are necessary to become a better thinker. Well, it's really, I'm glad you said that. So when you, when you look at the what they call the SCANS report, which is what do businesses want from our graduates? Number one, so communications, collaboration, uh, and problem solving, those are two, three, and four. Yep. But number one was what they call executive function, which right. has a lot to do with entrepreneurship. The ability exactly. to see a project, design a project, figure out what you need to do to get it done. So let me let's start with, with Amy. So do you want to be, do you want to run your own business or, or do you see you adding entrepreneurship through a, a somebody else's business? Uh, maybe in the beginning through someone else's business, but yeah, I definitely can see myself running something of my own. Yeah, adding value in a new way. Mm -hmm. How about you, Adam? Are you, how do you see yourself in terms of, uh, would you, do you already even have a product idea in your head? Like, I think I could sell uh, X and I can make it happen. Not a product uh, necessarily, but I find myself like Amy wanting to go into another company and uh, share my ideas with them first and then mm -hmm. learn a lot from them to mm -hmm. eventually start my own business. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Let's finish up, Professor Billa. If you could give any hint to our audience about why they should join ICE and get a minor in ICE, what what are the thing? What would one thing or two things you would tell them? Why should why should they say, oh, that's an interesting concept? I'd like to have it. It will be like no experience you ever thought you would have in business <laughs> school. You know, I between meditation and breathing and playing with Legos and then 
applying all of our optimized neurochemistry to solve the challenges of the That's world yeah. is a very interesting and rewarding business experience. You get it. You get it. I just want to say thank you to you. I'm very excited about the program. We have thank a you. fantastic undergraduate program we will always have one we're, we're we've got a new MBA that's likely to to be uh, synchronized with the University of Maine uh, but our MBA will probably be uh, taught and perhaps mostly mm -hmm. taught by our own USM professors we're not going anywhere in our long-standing excellent school of business so thank you Adam thank you Amy thank for you. coming thank in we really you. appreciate your and wish you thank good you. luck in your graduation this year thank and good you. luck in your final year As we close the December USM update, we'll end with a serenade of the holiday season by the USM School of Music Chamber Singers. I wish you a wonderful, safe, and lovely holiday season. Thank you.